creative living. Utilizing today's technology with the best of the past to bring you innovative ideas and up-to-date information for creative lifestyles in today's active world. With your host, Cheryl Borden. Thanks so much for joining me today for Creative Living. We're going to learn how to use fresh herbs from the garden in cooking. We'll talk about dyeing silk fabric and show a delightful new cupcake project from Wilton. One of my guests is Connie Moyers, and she's with the New Mexico Cooperative Extension Service. Connie's going to talk about growing your own fresh herbs, and then she'll share some recipes and ideas for using them. And some of her ideas include making pesto, cucumber salad, cilantro dressing, and some other tasty treats. She lives in Clovis, New Mexico. We're also going to meet a fashion designer who's going to show how to dye silk fabric. Orlando Dugay is going to show us his exciting new red collection of garments. And he uses the cochineal beetle, an insect native to South America, to dye the fabric. He says that Duchess Silk Satin Organza is the best quality of silk to color, and he'll explain why. He lives and works in Santa Fe, New Mexico. My first guest today is Emily Taytak, and she's the Assistant Culinary Specialist with Wilton Brands in Woodridge, Illinois. Emily's going to demonstrate how to make a gumball cupcake. These would be adorable favors or decorations at a child's birthday party or really for any other afternoon get-together. Emily, thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. I've always me. wondered, where in the world do you come up with all the different designs, the ideas? I know you have a team of people you work with. We do, we do. We have a creative department, but this project, I actually, someone brought it in for a birthday. Uh -huh. One of our just co-workers birthday and I saw it in the break room and I thought, oh, that's so cute. I want to show people how to do that. So just like normal people would come up with ideas. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. So it's it's gumballs. It's gumballs. So mm -hmm. this is one of our new stands. It's a gumball stand, obviously. And we also have color cups, which are foil lined. So when you bake them, they don't lose any of the vibrancy. So you see all the beautiful mm. little gumballs. Oh, I see. I hadn't thought about that. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's let's show everyone let's get how to started. make these. And they are so easy. They are so easy. So I just have our favorite cupcakes. Mm -hmm. We did vanilla or we did, you know, yellow uh -huh. cupcakes. But you could do chocolate or whatever you'd like. And I have some chocolate decorating icing. And right. we're just going to smooth ice the top. And talk about easy. We don't have to mix it. We don't add colors. Nothing. We don't, it's just it's ready, ready to go. And it's delicious chocolate. So and you don't use tips or anything with these No, nope. you can. Cubes. You can uh -huh. use tips. But for this, we're just going to smooth ice the top. So just kind of oh. spread a little bit on there. And I love the smell of it. It reminds me of a Tootsie Roll. Oh, gosh, I know I'll like it. Mm-hmm. Am I getting close to oh, the Oh, that looks I enough. Even yep. see. Okay. And then you can just take your spatula and smooth ice it. Okay. Smooth it out. So no fuss, no muss, mm -hmm. no mixing. <laughs> and these will last if you put them in, in the refrigerator. Yes, they'll last they will for last months. for a little bit. Yep. Mm -hmm. you just keep them, you know, until you run out of them or it's been a couple weeks, then you can toss them. <laughs> if you're lucky enough if to If you're have lucky any to left. not snack uh -huh. on them, which I always do. Perfect. And now we're gonna add little chocolate candies to look like gumballs. Okay. So just grab a few and just stick just them all press over. Press them in. Absolutely. And the colors again are so pretty on oh, this chocolate yeah. icing. They just pop, <clears throat> and that's why we chose chocolate. Mm -hmm. Love it, love and it. And you put two on and eat one. And exactly. <laughs> that's what's fun about decorating cakes. Yes. Cupcakes. There's always something to snack on, and I know <laughs> I'm guilty of it. But you can use M and M's. You can use mm -hmm. any kind of chocolate candy you have. Better add a few more. I see oh, that I'm not getting it no, quite as thick. perfect. That looks great. Okay. And then what we have are just, again, vanilla cupcakes that I crowned. Oh. And those are going to be our bases. So we just flip them upside down. Oh. And then you could eat those later, too, Absolutely. at the Absolutely. You can eat the whatever. crown that you cut off. It's all about <laughs> snacking. Uh-huh. So I have some Necco wafers and using food safe writing pens. Okay. Food safe. Food That's safe. the key. These yes. aren't These our are food regular safe. markers. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, just write five cents, one cent, whatever you'd like to write on there. And one side's blank. So one side's blank, it, yes. Uh -huh. And if you have a little fondant, you can also use fondant to make this. Oh, okay. Perfect. And then using our chocolate icing, we'll oh, just attach everything together. Okay. Oh. Oops. 
just put some on here. Yep, right? exactly. And that'll just stick to the front of our red cupcake. Oh, this one. Oh, on the stand. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes, I on the stand. And I, plus I had it upside down. There you go. Perfect. And then we'll add a little bit. This is sort of the glue. This is acting as our glue, too. So maybe you won't have any left over to snack on. <laughs> yeah, what was I worrying about? I know. And then just stick oh, it like put, uh -huh. that. And then I we'll see. And if you set it straight up and down, it would look like a cupcake on another cupcake. Right, but now it looks, it looks like, like, a like a gumball stand. I see. Yes, and then every gumball needs their little topper. So again, just adding with a little bit of chocolate, again with our glue. And that just goes right on top like that. And look how easy that was. How fast was that? How fast was that? And it's so cute. And they're perfect for parties. I love them. And they're really adaptable. Well, they really are. And I can't think of any occasion that this wouldn't work for, whether it's adult birthdays mm -hmm. or children's or birthdays. Or kids' birthday, right. Well, thanks so much, Emily. I love when I get new ideas like this. You're welcome. Thank you so much for coming, Orlando. You, you have such amazing talent, and, and unfortunately, we won't have time to go through everything you do, mm -hmm. but I would like to talk to you about the beading process. Mm -hmm. You know, that's uh, tatting is a lost art. Not too many people do embroidery, and to me, beading is one of the most beautiful arts, mm -hmm. but it's very difficult for some of us. So you do beading professionally, don't you? Yes, I do. Uh, beading on garments and uh -huh. handbags. Mm -hmm. And that's really where you started, but it mm -hmm. kind of led you to uh, creating your own design. First of all, you design your patterns. Mm -hmm. uh, you do the bead work. It's all done by hand. Yes. And uh, you're coming out with a new collection called the Red Collection. Yes, so that's correct. So you didn't just take the easy way out and go down and buy red organza, <laughs> did you? What did you decide no, to do? I, I always have to make things a lot more difficult. <laughs> um, well, so my new collection is actually based on a fantasy um um, monarchy. Um, it's a, in my in my story. It's a pre-contact uh, monarchy run by. It's a matriarchal monarchy, um, and um, a lot of people think that uh, matriarchal means that the women are at an absolute power. But um, I think in a monarchy, uh, it it takes a balance of men, masculine and feminine, um, to make everything work. And I think that's kind of uh, throughout history is is kind of an example of that. But um, anyway, so the, 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 the society that I have in mind is, is this woman's dominated society. And um, uh, I, it, it's set here in North America, uh, pre-contact. So um, uh, there's a beetle called a cochineal beetle that mm -hmm. has been used for dyeing for centuries um, by the, the peoples of South America um, and through the Americas. And, um, but it's only red. It's, it's, it shades of red. It dyes a, a variety of shades of mm -hmm. red, um, but you can also get purples. Mm -hmm. um, you can get green, oranges, um, even silver. I just recently saw a piece of fabric from, I forget which country it was, um, that had silver. And oh, I, I thought I, that was pretty amazing. Well, I've always heard of cochineal, but uh -huh. I didn't really know. So it's an actual beetle It's a the from female be cactus beetle uh -huh. mm, from cactus Peru. Beetle. Uh -huh. And so the, the the beetles that I use are from Peru, uh -huh. and so um, and the, the funny thing is I ordered the these are Peruvian cochineal, but uh -huh. um, they're exported to British Columbia, Vancouver, and so then when I order them, then they're exported <laughs> from Canada to the United States. They have States. a long trip, yeah, to they get have a long over trip here to get here. And, and I thought it was interesting. It's only the females, mm -hmm. and uh, when they're removed from the cactus, how long does it take? I guess them to demise. You know that I don't really know. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sure it's a few days. But you said there's they, just fields and fields. Yeah, there's. They have fields millions. of cochineal uh -huh. uh, cactus, um, and uh, I've seen a, a couple of uh, videos and photos of uh, the how they the process the process mm -hmm. of the uh -huh. harvesting the, the beetles. So th these are kind of kind of grainy, kind of like um, yeah, coffee and these beans. Are, yeah, and these are whole up. beetles. These are whole beetles. Mm -hmm. They're that small. Yes. Okay, and then you use a you grind these yourself using a coffee grinder. Yes. Uh huh. And it comes out it's so fine. Uh huh. Like that. Okay, so you it, were going to show us how to how to and mix it. And I can it. show you. Um, 
the actually, color. of course, uh, and you you actually <coughs> um, dye up to ten yards or something at a yes, time. Yes, um, um, the the first gown for this red collection, I dyed I dyed ten yards of um, silk Duchess satin and ten yards of uh, silk organza. Wow! Now the organza and is pretty thin. Yes. What about the the, the, satin, the silk the Duchess. Duchess satin is a very heavy material, I and um, so. it takes a lot of um, uh, cochineal to dye it. Um, I really sent, originally wanted a very bright, vibrant red. Uh -huh. I got more of an salmony orange mm -hmm. color, and um, uh, I think I believe that's uh, this oh, color right this here. Uh -huh. And um, but um, it, 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 what I didn't uh, anticipate is the, the 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 heaviness of the silk. Right. You know, you're so putting what about a half a teaspoon or something? Yeah. It's just and do you use hot water like you do with fabric um, yeah, dyes? Yeah, you do. Yeah, you use you hot use water. Hot. And just for this example, I just put it in regular uh -huh. water. But the thing, it, um, and you see how red that is. Uh -huh. um, and if it was hot water, it'd be br you can get a really nice bright red. And then depending on the mordant that you add to the to the to the silk. Um, but there's a uh, cochineal so finicky it um we used regular tap water in this water and the the minerals in the tap water will change uh the outcome and so you get a lot of purples oh, so depending that. on where you live or yeah, what your water so is the like. best thing to use is distilled water distilled. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. and so you know it takes out it's a, it takes all the impurities and everything so it really gives you a pure color mm -hmm. and um uh and just depending on the mordants you can change the color mm -hmm to uh, a variety of colors. So um, these are color. some that you, and these are just samples, like you said, yeah. you're just sort of practicing to see what, what the colors mm -hmm. would come out. And they're so totally different, and it's using yeah. just the one product. Yeah, and see, and you have that red, you have this blush pink, uh -huh. this blush pink here. That's very you have um, a tan, uh, like, a, like a peachy Cor color, peach. uh -huh. um, this red. Um, mm -hmm. That pink over there, and you have purple right here. Oh, it's very deep purple. I thought uh -huh. this was kind of purple. Yeah, and see, yeah. this is like a burgundy. Uh -huh. uh, and um, you can get a wide range of colors. Uh -huh. um, it all depends on, well, a lot of it depends on how long it's left in the, mm -hmm. the bat. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, it, um, sometimes when you over dye, you really get, it really changes the color a lot and I, I've learned quite a bit about the dyeing process of with just coaching and that's why I, I say it's so finicky because it, it, it's it's um, it's it just uh, every little thing that touches it or adds to it it, it really <laughs> completely changes the color uh -huh. uh, so that's why you got to do the whole 10 yards at once you could never mm. probably come back and no. match it uh, you can if you have if you wrote, if you've um, written everything down. Written everything down, down. yeah. I you, see. You, the, exactly the, 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 the amounts that you used, the, the type of water you used, uh -huh. um, <laughs> the, the type of thing that you did the dye bath in, and mm -hmm. everything, it all plays a factor. Because, it, it, say for instance, uh, because I went to the Española uh, Fiber Arts Center in Española, and they invited me to go ahead and dye my fabric there oh. because they had a large space so I could hang 10 yards of silk. Uh -huh. And they were very generous in giving me that um, space. But um, they, with their, um, their wash tubs there, we had to clean all of that out with soap and water and, and then dry everything and then mm -hmm. rinse it with distilled water to make sure that nothing touched the silk so that it changed mm -hmm. it. Well, that's what I wondered in the vats that you use. Are they stainless steel or um, what are they? The, the, uh, the pots on the stove, those were, uh, what I used at that time was um, enamel, enamel. Uh, were, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I recently started using the stainless steel pots. And so you do, after you do all of this, then you have to thoroughly clean those before yep. you use or try to create a different color. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. you have to clean them all out, wash uh -huh. them, and then rinse them out with distilled water, and then... Uh, so you do uh, rinse with distilled water uh -huh. as well? Yeah, oh. and um, and then with uh, with these, when I first started doing them, um, I was, I, did, I had totally forgotten about the mortising part of the dyeing process. I don't know how I did that, but I kept, uh, I got all these dark colors, um, uh, oranges, and um, 
I kept reading, I started reading up more on the dying uh -huh. processes and everything and I decided, oh, well, I totally forgot about the mourning part. So I, um, uh, I went through that whole process, washed them again and uh, did some other pieces. And so these are the colors that I last came out with. Mm -hmm. And they're more permanent now. So now if I wash these, um, the color doesn't stay. And so the mordant oh. um, helps uh, the color and stay. And it's called what? Mordant. Mordant. M yeah, M-O-R-D-A-N-T. Okay, the um, mordant process. Yeah. Uh -huh. So um, in other words, that process sets it, Yeah, it sets say. the color, mm -hmm. yeah. Now, do you rinse it in cold water? You, uh, yeah. You mix it in the hot, yeah, just like we would water. fabric dyes mm -hmm. that we might would do yeah. at home. Yeah, and you can, you can do experiment with all different types of products. You can rinse in hot water. I mean, I you, you can try anything just to get <laughs> see what color you end up with. Uh -huh. um, but a lot of times you you want to make sure that you write down exactly what you, you did so you can recreate uh -huh. that. But um, sometimes when you go to recreate it, it, you will not get that same shade. When so. it comes out after you take it out and then hang it up to dry, like you mentioned, all 10 yards, is it really wrinkled? Is um, organza in the in the silk? Yeah, wrinkle? sometimes. But you, what you don't want to do is crush it. You don't want to wring it. Wring it. Yeah, because uh -huh. then you mess up the fibers. That's but, what so I you just l kind of squeeze it a little bit, just get out the excess water, and then uh -huh. hang it, dripping. So it would take a while to. Oh yeah, it totally takes a while. dry. Yeah, uh -huh. with the with the uh, organza though, it it, it really it's doesn't thinner. take very long. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, it's just fascinating. I can't wait to see the gowns that you make out of this yeah. uh, fabric, and all starts with the cochineal beetle. Yeah. Thank you very much, Orlando. Thank you for having me. Connie, thanks so much for coming. I always learn a lot when you come. And, and I think what I like most is you do things easy and fast. That's right. That's what I like <laughs> because you don't have time otherwise to do it. We're going to talk about herbs. How did you get so interested in growing and preserving herbs? I just think they're pretty and I, I think they smell good and they taste good. And you can uh, put them in recipes without adding a lot of salt and, you know, you get a lot of flavor that way. And you ask me if I grow my own and I do, but sometimes... I just grow them. I might not even uh -huh. use them all that much, but um, I really enjoy it. Uh -huh. Well, I've grown parsley. That, that's about the only thing I've mm -hmm. ever tried, and I sit at my kitchen window so I won't forget to take care of it. But uh, you also mentioned that, you know, sometimes at the grocery store all we can find are those little packages of looks like they're dead already. Uh -huh. But if we grow our own, we can pick them at peak times. We can, and... And, you know, you'd want to keep them, these have started to seed out for the fall, but you can do that. But you can also get these new in the grocery store where they're growing. And oh, if you get I through, you could those. plant it. And they're about the same price as little packages where you were talking about. Oh, I see. So, well, that looks a lot more appetizing. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, So it does. nice and fresh. Uh -huh. So I really enjoy that. And, um, you know, if you grow your own herbs, I do try to dry some of mine. And mm -hmm. I'll just take a bundle, and you could mix the types or whatever. And I'll put a, a rubber band or some string around it and just hang and it just upside hang it. down. I have a place in my kitchen on a cup rack that works real good for that. So uh -huh. um, and oregano just takes, well, and thyme and days, basil. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then um, they have these new little jars. These are really that cute are just small and you can put it in there mm -hmm. but they have a shaker top and that uh, makes it kind of nice where mm -hmm. you can just open that little green lid and shake it out and, and uh, put it into your recipes. Well that's, so I, do, I haven't even looked for do a lot of that. Uh -huh. And then, you know, in the grocery store now you can buy flavor cubes that have right. different things in it but we can make our own and um, these are some fun scissors that I thought those were for scrapbooking, but I see now that they're for <laughs> I found, mincing. But see, they uh -huh. uh, have little things in there, and so we can mince them wow. and do different things. And um, my husband makes pick the gallo every week, and he uses it all week long in his omelets every morning. But we also put it on everything. Uh -huh. Just keep a bowl of it going, and that so this works. This is just an ice tray. This uh, one's just a silicone ice tray, and I mm -hmm. kept thinking, well, how do you get all that stuff out of there? And he figured this out. You just use this guard that goes with uh -huh. it, and well, it see. scrapes it That's out. That's a lot faster than it, having to take a knife it and, is. and chop. And then you just store it uh -huh. with that guard on it. Oh, that's so those are some really uh -huh. neat little scissors that are available. And you could, you know, fill these cubes, and then we could put um, 
olive oil or chicken broth or water, softened butter. Now you said not to melt the butter. Don't melt the butter, it'll change the properties of it, but you could do the softened butter and you could do like, that was oregano, we could do all oregano or we could mix and make an Italian mix with basil and mm -hmm. thyme and different things. But uh, these are just some silicone ice cube trays I bought as ice cube trays, but those are ones that are made specifically for it. And what's neat is they have the lid. Have a lid. This and they're a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. uh, plastic wrap over it. And there's two in a package. Well, that's nice. And those work really well. And we're going to make some ba uh, some pesto in a minute. We could put that in there and freeze it. And then after it's frozen, take it out and put it into another freezer container, mm -hmm. or a Ziploc bag or something. Label it so you know what it is. <laughs> And unless you want surprise meals. And then you can just have that in there and say you wanted pasta with just a little bit of pesto or uh, whatever you just made on there. Uh -huh. You can just uh, mix that up in it and, and you've flavored that and that's all you have to do. And also you're just getting the one out so you don't open the jar or, or container in the refrigerator and then it can get bad before you maybe use it all up. That's right. And you know, my kids figured out and they bought some ice cube trays to put up their green chilies. Because you oh. know, in this part of the country, we always have to have frozen green sure. chilies in our freezer. And so they chopped them and put them in these and they'll get out one or two cubes, mm -hmm. whatever they That's need. That's a good idea. And my brother figured oh, yeah. out, uh, if you tested his blood, it would be mostly chipotle. <laughs> but you know, most of the time it just says, use one chipotle pepper and adobo sauce and there's two or three in that package so what do you do? Let them get bad You usually. can blend uh -huh. them up or something and, and he freezes them in, in these containers and then just takes the cubes out. Uh -huh. So mostly anything you wanted to freeze in terms of seasonings you could do. Mm -hmm. Now you so. don't can uh, herbs do you? No you don't, you don't and cook. you don't do the oils. Um, flavored oils are not really safe to do and the best place to find information for that is at your extension office or um, the USDA, or there's a National Center for F Home Food Preservation. That's an mm -hmm. excellent site that explains all of that, and that is an extension in the USDA website. Oh, good. So when you said we're going to make pesto, that's we, my favorite. It's herb. so easy to make, and a lot of people just don't do it. We're going to put some of this fresh basil in here and just kind of pick the leaves off mm -hmm. and, and put... Um, about a half a cup or so in here. And it's just oil, uh, what, uh, pine nuts? Uh, pine nuts, but else? you could use walnuts or pecans if oh. you wanted to. And you know, everybody thinks that ba uh, pesto is only made out of basil. Yeah, but I it was. Um, I've made some out of cilantro that's really good. Uh, hmm. Lemon balm, um, mint. I've, I haven't made it out of mint, but I know some people that have. I'm going to go ahead and put the fresh garlic, garlic in here in as mm -hmm. we chop this up and let it chop a little bit and then we'll add the other ingredients. Kind of working we'll backwards here. just have here. to work backwards <laughs> here and get this going. So we chop that and we don't even have to open that. We can add our um, Parmesan cheese, our fresh Parmesan mm -hmm. cheese through there. And you said your husband doesn't particularly like the cheese in it. So do you just leave the cheese out or do you substitute something in I it? Have, I've made it just without cheese. Mm -hmm. And that works real well too. So we've kind of mixed oh. that and we're just going to turn our uh, food processor on and let it uh, put the olive oil in. Can smell it. Smell <laughs> That's what that I, basil. I, I mm -hmm. love the smell. And we I can even too. maybe add a little bit more basil to mm -hmm. that in a little bit. And we'll freeze it uh -huh. in those ice cube trays or in the. What an easy way to trays. make it. And it's pretty expensive when you buy some of these things. It so is. that's a good way to save money and know it's fresh. And, and like we were saying, put in what you want and what your family mm -hmm. likes to eat. Mm -hmm. Well, Connie, as always, thank you for being with us. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the show today. Next time on Creative Living, we'll learn how to make a baby security shawl, and we'll demonstrate making your own chicken stock from scratch and using it in some delicious soup recipes.
One of my next guests will demonstrate how to cut polar fleece fabric using stick and rinse tape. She'll also show how to quickly finish the edge of this extremely stretchy fabric by using her sequins and ribbon presser foot. This fabric is great for baby blankets. Another guest on the next show is a cookbook author, chef, and teacher. He believes in using the freshest ingredients available at his cooking school. And he's going to demonstrate chicken stock preparation as he prepares a simple Tuscan chicken soup with cannellini beans. I hope you'll plan to join me next time for Creative Living. We are very pleased to offer a special booklet that accompanies this series of Creative Living. We are celebrating our 40th year on PBS. This booklet is titled the 40th Anniversary Series and it features a wonderful collection of ideas and information and it's available free of charge on our website. Posted as a PDF file, you can simply download the entire booklet or just the segments you're most interested in. For your copy of this commemorative booklet, go to our website at kenw.org and then click on Creative Living. Scroll down to the booklet section and you can click on this booklet or on any of the other booklets we have available online. We would like to invite you to sign up for our free e-newsletter too. Go to KENW.org and click on the Sign Up Now button and input your email address. That's all there is to it. We would also like to ask you to become a fan of Creative Living on Facebook. Go to Facebook.com and in the search window type in Creative Living with Cheryl Borden. Thanks so much. We look forward to hearing from you.